this video, I'm going to be solving the Cambridge IGCSE February March 2022 paper 2 extended. So let's start. First question is saying the diagrams show a test tube containing pond water. The green color is caused by microorganisms that have chloroplast. Which characteristic of living organisms are shown? Now we do know that there is sensitivity going on. Why? That's because when the lights when, uh, were off, it was just pale green. When they turned on the lights, there was dark green area at the bottom. Also, that indicates that there is movement because it was just pale green, as you can see. Uh, and when the lights turned on, it moved to the bottom side, the dark green area accumulated at the bottom side. So that also shows that there is uh, movement. Also, the oxygen production over here also indicates that there is some sort of nutrition going on. So um, we need now sensitivity, movement, and nutrition. So far, all of our options are in B. So that's going to be our answer for this question. Next question. The key shows some features of living organisms that can be used to place them into one of the three different kingdoms. Which row correctly identifies these three kingdoms? Now, they're saying that there is a nucleus present, cell wall is present, and cell wall is made of cellulose. So, we do know that plants have a cell wall made of cellulose, so we're going to be choosing between C and D. Now, the cell wall is present, but it's not made of cellulose. That's actually the description of the fungi. Now, for Kingdom Z, they're saying that there is no nucleus at all. So... That's actually the prokaryote kingdom. So our answer is going to be C. Now we can't choose prototist. Prototist has both animal cell, which contains a nucleus, and both plant cell characteristics, which also contain a nucleus. So there's no way that it doesn't contain a nucleus in any either way. Okay. This question is a magnification question. So whenever uh, I get a question like that, I always uh, draw this I am triangle this will help me to determine which type of calculation that I need to make so for example over here he requires the magnification so magnification equals image size divided by the actual size so the image size over here uh, is set to be 70 millimeters now if we need to convert 70 millimeters to this given unit we have to multiply by uh, 1000 so that's actually going to be 70,000 why the answer is 70,000? That's because, as I told you in this uh, formula, the magnification equals image size over uh, the actual size. The image size over here is 70 millimeters. If we divide that by 1, it's still going to give you 70,000. So that's going to be our answer. Now, question number 4 is saying that there are two types of cell. One animal and one plant were examined using a light microscope. Which row shows the correct combination of structures that would be observed in the cells? Now, they're saying that they observed chloroplast and membrane in the animal cell. That's incorrect. Chloroplasts are actually a structure found in the plant cells. So that's not the correct answer. Now, B, cytoplasm and nucleus in the animal cell and chloroplast and membrane in the plant cell. That is actually correct. So let's set B aside membrane and cell wall now that's incorrect animal cells do not have a cell wall so that's not correct either d nucleus and chloroplast well that's also incorrect as animal cells do not contain uh, chloroplast so our answer is actually b now question number five is saying the diagram shows a cross section through a leaf which arrow shows the direction of diffusion of carbon dioxide on a sunny day now we do know that carbon dioxide enters during the sunny time because as we know that during the uh, light or during the sunny time there is more photosynthesis than respiration but respiration takes place at all times but in a lower rate so we do know that uh, photosynthesis requires carbon dioxide uh, because it's a raw material uh, as well as water so we're going to be choosing the one that has um, carbon dioxide entering the leaf so that's actually going to be D now we can't choose C because that's leaving the cell and what's leaving the cell at that time is the oxygen because oxygen is a waste product of photosynthesis so uh, 5 is going to be D 
Next question, question number six. The diagram shows a plant cell after it has been submerged in solution P for 20 minutes. Which row describes the water potential of solution P at the start of the experiment at the condition of the cell after 20 minutes? Now, we do know that there's a, uh, this is a plant cell. So we're going to call this uh, plasmolized. And uh, we do know that for plasmolysis to take place, the solution outside has to be a lower concentration. Uh, that's because in order for osmosis to take place, there, there has to be a um, higher concentration inside the cell and then lower outside. So as we know, osmosis goes from higher water potential to lower water potential. So if the solution outside has a lower water potential, then the a higher water potential inside the leaf will uh, osmosis out of the cell. So the only option we have over here is C, the lower than out inside of the cell, and it becomes plasmolized as flaccid as this is a plant cell. Next question, question number seven, which row is correct for positive food test for vitamin C? Now, vitamin C is actually blue at the beginning, so we're going to be choosing between D, B and D. Heat required, no, we don't require heat. We actually require heat in the Benedict, uh, Benedict solution test for the reducing sugars, and it becomes colorless. So our answer for this question will be B. In which molecule are cross links formed between bases? Now that's actually the DNA. Next question, uh, what controls the speed of chemical reactions in all living cells? That is enzymes. We can't say hormones or ions or vitamins. Hormones don't control the speed of the chemical reactions. Uh, neither do ions or vitamins, of course. Okay, question number 10. Enzymes have an optimum temperature at which they are most active. Which row explains why the enzyme activity decreases if the temperature is not optimum? Now, below optimum temperature, it does, uh, enzymes do not denature. It actually denatures above the optimum temperature. So we cannot choose A or B. We're going to be choosing between C and D. Enzymes have less kinetic energy. That's correct. Enzymes denature above the optimum temperature. So that's going to be our answer. Now we cannot choose D because um, that's actually for the below optimum temperature. Now uh, above optimum temperature, the enzyme active site changes. So it denatures and the substrate can no longer fit into its active site. So that's what causes the um, the nature of the enzymes. Well, question number 11 is saying a piece of foil was placed over one green and white leaf on a plant. The plant was placed under blight light for 24 hours and then tested for starch and with iodine solution. Which diagram shows the areas of the leaf that would stain blue black with iodine solution? Now let's just remember that any green part would become blue black if there is starch uh, present. So we're going to be choosing between A and B. Uh, C will not work because all of these parts are actually labeled white on this diagram. And this will not work as well because uh, this part is actually covered by the foil. So these do not work. Now B is actually incorrect. That's because this part is covered by the foil if we look at the image. So the only answer that will work over here is A. That's because if we look, these parts are the only parts that are not covered and are green. So these parts will become stained by the iodine solution. And there's also a gap that was left behind by the foil. So uh, 11 will become A. 12, the graph shows the effect of the light intensity on the rate of photosensors. Uh, which environmental factor is limiting the rate of photosynthesis at X on the graph? Now, when the light intensity over here becomes constant, that means it is no longer a limiting factor. But when it's increasing, that means it is a limiting factor. And this uh, graph is showing that it is light intensity. And X is showing the part when it was still increasing and not when it became stationary over here. So our answer will become D, I mean B, sorry. Number 13, which condition can be caused by a lack of fiber in the diet? 
Uh, we do know that fiber stimulates the peristalsis, so uh, that's going to be A. Now we can't choose any of these options. Why? That's because obesity is the intake of excess food, uh, opposite to starvation, which in, uh, which is when someone doesn't eat enough. Scurvy is the vitamin C deficiency disease. So our answer over here will be A. Number 14, in which test tube will the breakdown of fat be the fastest? Now that's our keyword in this question. We need the fastest um, test tube and not the test tube that will actually like break down because some questions were asking which test tube will actually break down the fat but here they're asking for the fastest one in other words the test tube that will take the less time to break down all the fat in the milk so that's actually going to be a that's because both lipase and bile are present. We know that bile is a substance that's secreted by the liver. It's a form of mechanical digestion, not chemical, and um, it emulsifies fat and uh, it breaks down fat, so that's going to be A. Now, this one would work, but it's not going to be as fast as A. Same goes to C and D, so our answer will be A in this question. And uh, now, number 15, the uh, they're saying the diagrams show stages in the passage of water through a plant, which arrows show water moving in the form of water vapor. Now, we need uh, the water that's moving. Of course, there's water moving in all of these diagrams, but they need it in the form of water vapor. Now, here it's going to actually be osmosis, so that's not going to work. Uh, also here, it's moving through the uh, xylem, so that's actually water because xylem um, transports water and mineral ions so that's not going to work and here it's osmosis because water is entering to the root hair cells so the only option we have is b 16 the diagram shows some potato tubers new shoots are beginning to grow sucrose is being translocated from source to sink now this is a translocation uh, question so which statement is correct the tuber is a sink now I don't think so because the tuber is actually the one that is a source over here so that is incorrect the soil is a sink no because the soil is not using the sucrose that is being translocated in any way so that's incorrect the shoots are sources no the shoots are not sources they're actually sinks so our answer for this question will be d that's because the shoots are using the sucrose from the tubers in order to grow their shoots. So that's uh, what is called a sink. So our answer over here is D. Now 17, the diagram shows a section through the heart. What is the function of the structure labeled Q? Now we do know that Q is actually a valve. So this is incorrect. This is incorrect because it doesn't increase the pressure in part A at all. It doesn't control the amount of blood leaving the heart, but it does prevent backflow. Now we do know that any valve is um, has a function of preventing backflow. So we should put this answer aside. Now it prevents blood flowing into the vena cava. Now, no, that's incorrect because it actually prevents the backflow of blood into part b which is the left atrium so our answer is going to be c for this question question number 18 during the process of blood clotting damage to the blood vessels stimulate l and m which is converted to n what are l m and n now we do know that l is the platelets because this is the uh, cell that is responsible for blood clotting so we're going to be choosing between C and D. M is fibrinogen because a fibrinogen, as we know, in the process of blood clotting, uh, soluble fibrinogen is converted into insoluble fibrin. So our answer over here will become D. Now we can't choose M because that's actually the opposite of what is in the blood clotting process. So D is our answer. 19. Which statement about passive immunity is correct? Uh, antibodies are acquired. That's correct. It gives long-term effect. No, that's actually for the uh, 
active immunity. It is inherited. That's incorrect. Memory cells are produced again. This is for the active immunity, not the passive. So our answer is 19A. Now, question number 20, compared with inspired air, which description of expired air is correct? Now, we're comparing inspired air, which contains more oxygen, and it contains less carbon dioxide. Why? Because when we uh, breathe in the air, we're going to use the oxygen for respiration, and we're going to be uh, excreting out carbon dioxide. That's because carbon dioxide is a waste product of respiration, as we all know. So, uh, it has less oxygen, expired air has less oxygen and less carbon dioxide, that's incorrect. It has less oxygen and more carbon dioxide, that is uh, correct. It's ha it has more oxygen and less carbon dioxide, that is actually the inspired air. It has more oxygen and more carbon dioxide, that is incorrect. So, our answer over here will be B. Number 21, which row shows the features of gas exchange surface in humans? Now, the surface area should be large and the thickness should be thin. That is in order to decrease the diffusion distance so that the diffusion in the gas exchange surface is faster. So our answer for 21 will be B. Now, next question. Yeast is placed inside a container full of glucose solution with no air. That is a hint that this is anaerobic respiration and not aerobic so we cannot choose between c and d this is not the answer so we're going to be choosing between a and b now b is not going to be answered why because b is actually the process that takes place inside the muscles and not their yeast cells so our answer for this question will be a and we also know that yeast produces alcohol as a waste product for anaerobic respiration Number 23, which process uses energy released in respiration? Now, diffusion, evaporation, and osmosis are all passive processes in which uh, they do not use energy. They are just processes that can occur at um, any time without using energy. So our only answer that is left is C. C is growth, and of course, in order for anything to increase in its dry mass, it should uh, use energy and the uh, respiration so our answer is going to be c uh, next question which term describes the removal of the nitrogen containing part of amino acids to form urea now that is the definition of the word deanimation actually so we're going to be choosing deanimation because that's the definition and um, that's the thing that that's the process that actually converts protein into uh, carbohydrates and ammonia and the ammonia is converted into urea and so on so that's the process of the animation next question question number 25 which numbered parts form the central nervous system so we know that we have central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system so the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord now we need to choose the spinal cord and the brain in this picture. Now it's clear that one is the brain, so we have to choose any option with one in it. Now we also have the spinal cord, so A is not going to work, C is not going to work, or D because they do not have the brain. So it's actually going to be B, 1 and 2, because 2 is actually the spinal cord over here. It's part of the brain. So that's our answer for this question. Six. The diagram shows a section through the eye of an octopus. Octopus have eyes that are similar in structure and function to the human eyes. Which row identifies the structure of an octopus eye? Now, we do know that two is the lens, so we're going to be choosing between B and D. So also we know that the iris is number four, so it's clear to us now that the answer is D. Also, the pupil is number 5 over here, and the cornea is number 6, so that's going to be our answer, D. 27. A person eats a large bowl of rice. Rice contains starch, so we should know that starch, when it's broken down, it's going to be glucose. So, insulin will increase, and glucagon, which does the opposite of the hormone insulin, is going to decrease, of course. So, our answer for 27 will become C. 
Step number 28, a study investigated the effect on our muscle surface area of taking testosterone and doing exercise. Which conclusion about the data in the graph is correct? Exercise has no effect on our muscle surface area. That's incorrect because compared to the exercise portion, the no exercise portion has very much decreased amounts of uh, change in our muscle surface area. So this is not our answer. B, no exercise and not taking testosterone has the greatest effect. So no, it's not the greatest effect if we compare it to taking testosterone over here. Uh, exercise has the same effect on arm muscle surface area as no exercise. No, because in exercise it was, as I said in A, it was higher amounts compared to no exercise which was in smaller amounts. So no, by exercising you're increasing the average change in arm muscle surface area. So our only option that is left is D. Which is also our answer taking testosterone increases arm muscle surface area now yes it does because over here testosterone in both no exercise and exercise had the greatest average change in arm muscle surface area so that's our answer d next question 29 which statement about reproduction is correct all living species can reproduce asexually now that's incorrect Gametes are needed for asexual reproduction. No, gametes are only needed for sexual reproduction. Only organisms that are separated from other organisms of the same species can reproduce asexually. Now, there are also some species can reproduce asexually if they're not even like isolated, so that's incorrect. Our answer is D. Some organisms reproduce asexually and sexually. So that's correct because not all organisms can reproduce sexually or asexually. So like some can do asexual and some can do sexual. So like there is that and there is that. It's not both or it's not all sexual and it's not all asexual. So yeah, so that's our answer over here. 30. What will happen if a woman smokes during pregnancy? Nicotine can cross the placenta and affect the fetus. That is correct. Nicotine can cause COBD in the lungs of the fetus. Now, no, because the lungs of the fetus haven't been yet developed or fully developed. So that's incorrect. The woman can become addicted to carbon monoxide. No, she becomes addicted to nicotine actually. Carbon monoxide can cause cancer in the lungs of the fetus. Now, as I said, it doesn't, the lungs of the fetus still haven't developed like fully. So our answer is going to be A. Nicotine can cross a the placenta. C1, the graph shows the four hormones that control the menstrual cycle. Which curve on the graph represents the hormone LH? Now we do know that D is the progesterone and that uh, this one over here is the oestrogen so let's see where that leads us so b is actually the oestrogen so we cannot choose this one and of course l is the fsh hormone so what's left for us is actually c also we can make sure because um, lh is the hormone that stimulates ovulation so during ovulation the oestrogen levels are going to decrease very much because oestrogen is secreted from the over uh, ovum so when the ovum bursts there's less production of oestrogen so yeah so our answer is going to be 31 c question number 32 what happens to the mass of dna and a nucleus before mitosis occurs now we have to uh, know that mitosis is producing genetically identical and not different different is for the meiosis not for the mitosis so uh, what happens to the mass of DNA? It doubles. Yes, it doubles. It halves. No, that is for the meiosis. It stays the same. Of course not. It halves and then halves again. And that is incorrect. All of these are, are incorrect options. And A is the correct option. And we shouldn't even choose halves in any way because halves is for the meiosis. It stays the same. No way it will stay the same. It will not like restore the number of chromosomes in the cells so they have to be doubled in order to make 
uh, cells with the same chromosome number each time. Number 33, in a species of pea plant, height is controlled by one gene, the allele for tall is dominant to the allele for short. Now, from this sentence, we have to note that the dominant allele is tall and the recessive allele is short. A test cross, also we have to be reminded that the test cross means getting an animal of an unknown genotype and crossing it with a homozygous recessive and seeing the offspring that will come out. If all the offspring were tall, then this uh, genotype of the unknown uh, genotype animal is going to be homozygous dominant. If there is some, uh, for example, in this question, if some of them are tall and short, then this animal is heterozygous and not homozygous dominant. So now, if a large number of offspring are produced, which rows are possible? Now, we're going to say, for example, this option is going to be with us. That's because we don't know the genotype of this animal. And we want to know if it's heterozygous or is it homozygous dominant. So if it is heterozygous, then it's going to give us some tall and some short um, offspring. So four is with us. And also it's going to be two because all of them are tall. So that is if the animal came out to be homozygous dominant and it's going to be like that and like that all short and homozygous dominant will not work because as they said here the dominant allele is the tall so this will not work and uh, so our will, options will be two and four and that is c Question number 34, which statement about variation is correct? Continuous variation results in few phenotypes with no intermediates. Now, that is incorrect. That is actually the description of something called the discontinuous variation, which has an example of blood groups. For example, your blood group is either A, B, O, or A, B. So you cannot have, for example, like uh, a mixture of both of the, for example, let's say, O and AB blood groups. No, it's either this, this, or that. There is no in between. And uh, so that is what's meant by discontinuous variation. So let's read the other option. Discontinuous variation results in few phenotypes with no intermediates. That is correct. Uh, phenotypic variation is caused by environmental factors only. No, that is incorrect. Phenotypic variation is caused by genetic factors only. No, that is incorrect. They're both caused by um, phenotypic variation is both caused by environmental and genetic factors. So our answer is going to be B for this question. Okay, question number 35. Some plants have small leaves with thick waxy cuticles. Now that reminds us of something. Now we know that xerophytes are plants that are situated in hot climates and hot temperatures. So they need to minimize their water loss. So they have small leaves so they can minimize photosensors and transpiration. So they have less water loss. And they also have thick waxy cuticles so it can increase the diffusion distance. And uh, therefore there is slower diffusion so slower water loss. So let's continue. Which row describes the effect of these features on the water loss and the type of plant that has these features? Now, effect of water loss, it decreases. So by these description and specifications in this plant, we know that it actually decreases the water loss as small leaves, so less transpiration and less photosensors. Thick waxy cuticles, again, cuticle can decrease the water loss as there is a higher diffusion distance so we're going to be choosing between a and b so effect on water loss it decreases type of plant is hydrophyte no hydrophytes are the plants situated in the water not in the dry climates now hydrophytes have large leaves and they also have uh, no cuticle or minimum cuticle because they do not require cuticle they're actually situated in the water so our answer is actually going to be B. It decreases the water loss and also it is zero fight as I explained earlier. Now question number 36. Some plants of different species can be crossed with each other to form hybrids that have a diploid n a number different from either of the two par parent species. The diagram shows a cross between plants with different diploid numbers. 
species one uh, has diploid number 70 and species two number is unknown now their zygote produces a diploid number of 64 what is the diploid number of species two now in order to solve this question we have to get the haploid number of the two species species one and species two now I got the haploid number of 70 we're going to basically do 70 divided by 2 which is going to give us 35 now species 2 we should get the haploid number so which means we're going to try out all of these numbers divided by 2 to check if the haploid number with the haploid number is going to give us the diploid number 64 so I'm going to just try out a number and see if it adds to 64 or not now 29 divided by 2 to get the haploid number this is the diploid number so we need to divide by 2 to get the haploid number the 29 divided by 2 is going to give us 14.5 no now this will not work because it's in decimals also this one will not work because it will be decimals we have 32 and 58 to try out let's try out 32 and see if it will give us 64 in the end or not now 32 is 16 it's haploid number so let's add 35 with 16 and see if it will give us 64 or not now it gave us 51 actually so that's not the number that we need over here so 32 is not our answer now let's try it uh 58 58 divided by 2 is going to give us 29 so let's add 35 with 29 and see if it will give us 64 or not now yes indeed it gave us 64 so our answer is going to be 58 now next question 37 the diagram shows some of the stages involved in the nitrogen cycle which processes are carried out at each stage absorption decomposition denitrification, nitrification and nitrogen fixation now let's look at these numbers now the first thing that i notice is the nitrogen fixation i've noticed that five is the nitrogen fixation because it transforms atmospheric nitrogen to nitrate in the plants so let's check if any of these numbers have five as nitrogen fixation yes b has five so i'm going to see if the rest of the options are correct because this is the only option that has actually five in it let's check nitrification we know that nitrification is converting ammonia into a nitrate so four yes that is what i just said now ammonia to nitrate dentrification is converting nitrate to uh, atmospheric nitrogen so that is indeed one as it's stated over here decomposition let's see three is described as decomposition plant protein into ammonia yes that is correct because the animation takes place now absorption is two yes nitrate is absorbed by the plant protein so yes our answer over here will be b next question 38 genetically engineered bacteria as used uh, to produce human proteins into which component of the bacterial cell is the human DNA inserted to pre uh, to produce human proteins now we know that genetic engineering takes place with the human DNA and the plasmid of the bacterial cell so we're going to be choosing plasmid. They're asking into which component of the bacterial cell is the human DNA inserted to. So that's the plasmid. We insert the, we cut the human DNA with the restriction enzyme, and then we add it into the plasmid using the ligase enzyme. So it is plasmid, and then the bacteria are placed into the fermenter so they can produce large amounts of the genetically. Um, engineered uh, substance that they are trying to produce the sugar in the milk is digested by an enzyme which row matches the name of the enzyme with the sugar it digests now we need an enzyme here lactose and lactose are actually the name of the sugar and not the enzyme so we have to choose between a and c over here lactase and lactase we know that lactase will break down lactose not glucose so we're going to be choosing 
C for our answer. And this is our last question. The list shows some activities that happen in a forest. Cutting down only selected trees, educating people about forests, replanting trees, and cutting down trees to grow crop plants. Which activities are likely to ensure that the forest is used sustainably? Now, cutting down only selected trees is part of a sustainable manner because you're not cutting down all the trees. You're leaving some trees and you're only cutting like selected trees because maybe you're trying to decrease extinction. So number one is with us educating people about forest yes that uh, that can help in sustainability and also three replanting trees that is also part of the sustainability cutting down trees to grow crop plants no that is not sustainable so our answer will be one two three which is a so that was the last question as you can see that there are no more questions they're all blank pages so uh, did you find this paper hard or easy or average in my opinion it's just like any other exam so please consider subscribing to my channel and uh, please like this video if you found it useful and if you enjoyed it please share it with your friends so they can enjoy it as well and uh, thank you all for watching and uh, good luck with your exams.